internal representation. This is how we represent, this is how we store information in a computer. So computers store information as a, as a sequence of bits. And the sequence of bits is, if I go back to the address, so remember when we were talking about the addresses? So remember the slide where we had something like this and then we had like these different addresses and each one of these addresses represented a byte. So each one of, this is how the computer stores information. So each one of these, um, each one of these addresses references a byte and we have, and then we have eight bits inside the byte and each bit has a zero or a one. And so the zero or the one is what's used to store the information. And if we look at the, actually what's going on in the computer when that zero or one is being stored, we, we're actually just looking at voltages. So if we have a low voltage, that's gonna represent a zero. So I think that's usually like less than 0.3 volts. And if we have a high voltage, that's gonna store a one. So that would be like 3.5 to five volts. And so we're basically representing information in the computer with a zero or a one, so in binary. And each bit, so each one of these addresses here can store one byte or eight bits. And it's called a bit for um, binary digit. So, so this is, this is, uh, this is the computers that we have that we're talking about. Okay, we can store a zero or a one. If we talk about quantum computing, and I wanted to mention this because it's really interesting, um, but we, instead of having a um, bit, we have a, what's called a qubit or a quantum bit. And so normally with the bits, like on a normal computer, we can store a zero, we can have a zero or a one. It's one or the other. With quantum computing, so with a qubit or a quantum bit, you can actually have both a zero or a one on that bit. A computer normally organizes the bits into groups of eight bits that are one byte. And so if we have 32 bits, that would be four bytes. And if we have um, 16 bits, that would be two bytes. So just to say, so you're familiar with that terminology because you hear these terms used a lot. So as far as number systems, we're used to the base 10 or decimal number system. That's what we use all the time. So like, I mean, pretty much every, all the numbers we use are in base 10. And so for any numbering system, we can, we can use a base, we can use any base we want for number systems. And so for any, any number system, the number of digits that you, that you can count as fixed. So for instance, with base 10, the digits that we're limited to are zero through nine. So we can use um, zero through nine. So that, so we basically have 10 digits that we can use to represent every number. So that's why it's base 10. So an example of that is let's, so we just have, so I have one, two, three, four here. And this can be represented as one times 10 to the third because we have one in the thousands place. So this would be like, really that's 3000. And then we have plus and we have two in the hundreds place times 10 squared, which is a hundred. So this would be plus 200 plus, And then we have 10 to the one. So we have three in the tens place. So three times 10 to the one. So this is plus three or 30. And then we have um, four times 10 to the zero. So we have four in the ones place. So four times 10 to the zero is just four. So if we add these up, we get this number. Um, and this is, this wrong? This is 1,000. <clears throat> so if we add these up, we get one, two, three, four. So this number is being represented in the base 10 system by, um, by the one times 10 to the third plus two times 10 squared plus three times 10 to the one plus four times 10 to the zero. And we can do the same thing with decimals. So if we have a decimal the, in, this equa in this number here, the five in this decimal is in the tenths place. 
the six is in the hundredths place, and the seven is in the thousandths place. And so we can continue with our um, number schemes. So this one, two, three, four here is what I had on the previous slide. And so I already had the one, two, three, four, and then I have plus, and then the plus 0.5, and then 6 times 10 to the negative 2, 0 0.06, and then 7 times 10 to the negative 3. So we get the 1.1234.567 if we add those up. This, this seems really basic and easy because we're really familiar with this. Where things get kind of weird is when we start looking at a, a base that we're not used to using. So with the binary number system, or base 2, and it's base 2 because we have two possible digits, we can use a 0 or a 1 to represent all possible numbers. So let's look at this binary number right here. So we have a 1101. One, one. So we can write this the same way that we just did with this previous number that was base 10. So remember we had the 1 in the thousandths place, so 1 times 10 to the third plus 2 times 10 squared. So we're going to do the same thing here, only now we're going to use 2 where the 10 was because we're, we have a base 2 system instead of a base 10. So if we rewrite this, um, so for this number, I'll just number these, so this would be the one, 0 spot, 1, 2, and 3. So then I can um, Write this so I can expand this out, and this is actually how you figure out what your binary number is as well. So I have 1 times 2, and then this 1 is in the 3 spot, so 1 times 2 to the 3rd, that's equal to 8. So I'm going to have an 8 plus, and then I have a 1 here, so that's 1 times 2 squared, which is a 4, so I'm going to put a 4 here plus, and then I just have a zero, so it's zero times two to the one, but it's a, just a zero, so I'll just put a zero, plus, and then um, one times two to the zero is one. So if I add these up, I get 13. So what that means is that this 1101 is binary representation for 13 in decimal. And you'll sometimes see these numbers written like this, just to indicate what their base is, so like that binary number would, like I'd put brackets around it and then a 2 to indicate that that's base 2. You can do the same thing with the decimal numbers, so that's base 10. So this is just a way to um, represent what base we're writing these numbers with. So let's, so then we can do the same thing as far as writing a binary decimal number already done this part of this number. So let's look at the second part. So I'm just going to put the, um, let's actually um, figure out what this is. So we have, so this is the 13 that we had before plus, and then let's go through this. So we have one times, and then this, I have 0.1, so one times two to the negative one. So 0 0.2 plus, and then this is just zero because I have zero, but this zero is in the in this spot, so I have um, zero times two to the negative two. Just put zero plus, and then now I'm looking at this one, so that's so this is going to be negative three, so one times two to the negative third. All right, so then this is thirteen point six two five. So this. 1101.101 one, zero, one zero, one is equal to um, 13.625. And I'll just indicate that this one is base 10 and that this one is base 2.